analysis, we could either do the complex one here, where we would use equation 6, 4, or we could do 6, 1, and 6, 2. So let's do that one, the, the 6, 1, and 6, 2, the an and the bn. So we have our formula for an equals 2 over t integral of negative t over 2 to t over 2 of y of t where the square wave is our y of t times cosine of so it's omega n t so it's 2 pi n over t Integrating, so we're going to be integrating cosine essentially, right? Because the negative one, just a minus sign out front, positive one has no effect. So we're integrating cosine over a half period on one side and half period on the other side. Cosine is an even function, right? So if you integrate over the negative part of any interval, and you integrate over the positive part of any even function, um, and you take the difference between the two, because we have a minus sign in front of this one, you're going to get zero. Right? They, they'll have the same integral value, uh, so they'll both, it's symmetric, so they'll both integrate to positive, or in this case, positive values, but it could be negative values, and then uh, one of them has an opposite sign, it has the opposite sign of the other in these terms, because it has a minus one here. So we end up with zero, uh, because cosine is even. It turns out this always happens. When we have uh, an odd function, this is an odd function that we started with. Our y of t is an odd function. If we start out with an, an odd function that we're writing the Fourier series of, the ans will always come out to be zero. Okay. Similarly, if you integrate or if you do the Fourier series of an even function, all 
all the BNs will be zero. So that's a little shortcut. That always happens. So nice little thing to keep in mind. Um, so our BNs are 2 over t integral from minus t over 2 to t over 2 of y of t times sine 2 pi n over t t dt. Now, we can do a similar thing by splitting up the interval into two halves. So, negative t over 2 to 0, y of t has the value negative 1. So just like before, we'll have 2 over t. Um, we'll pull the negative sign out front, because we know that we'll be able to do that. 2 to 0 of sine 2 pi n over t, t dt, plus 2 over t integral from 0 to t over 2 of sine of 2 pi n over t, t dt. So now these are going to have opposite signs, because the sine is an odd function. So these are going to have opposite signs, and they are, uh, these two terms already have opposite signs, so they won't add to zero in this case. Um, instead, this actually simplifies down to um, 2 over n pi times 1 minus cosine. Uh, 
then you would have to, you don't just add the, the magnitudes or the amplitudes together directly. You add them together as amplitudes of cosine and sine at each frequency. And so that's how you end up with these, these uh, see these are higher frequency and they're, so we're, what we're computing is, this is the C1, this was the C3, this was the C5. Um, what, we're, what we're seeing there are the amplitudes of those sinusoids that sum up to give us the, the full representation. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the Fourier series. Uh, any questions on the Fourier series? Pretty awesome stuff. I mean, Fourier is some of the most fun math you can do, and the frequency domain is awesome. So, yeah. So if you, in if you're going to try to approximate a signal with a Fourier series, then you take as many as possible, you get, you get better and better with your uh, approximations as you keep adding them. And there are theorems around that. So there are, um, the, the Kreisig book actually talks about like bounding error based on how many terms you take in the series. Um, the infinite sum is the full representation. And we can use that infinite sum to get analytic solutions to ordinary and partial differential equations in terms of infinite sums. So our solutions are going to be infinite sums. They're going to be Fourier series, or they'll be integrals. They'll be Fourier transforms. Um, and these, uh, these infinite sums, if you want to approximate them, you have to add up as many as, many as, as you can um, until you get the right fidelity to what you're trying to represent. Exactly. And then, as we'll find out in a moment, for a transform to approximate continuous signals. Or, or not continuous, but uh, aperiodic signals. Okay.